how is this country running these this crisis? Who what's you know who makes regulations? Who can make new rules? Who can make these laws? And we don't have a government yet, and it's been 15 months without a government in Israel. So what's up, everyone? I'm Adam. This is Gabby. Hey guys. We're here with another one of our daily COVID-19 updates. We're recording today from Merida, Mexico. If you're new here, subscribe to our channel. We'll be here every day for the foreseeable future, <laughs> telling you about the Yucatan headlines, what's happening here, what's happening in our personal situation, taking calls from our friends around the world to find out what kind of situations they're facing. Yeah. At the end of every show, we'll go over some fun things that are happening online and tips for keeping ourselves sane during this whole crisis. Today is March 25th, 2020. So the first th big thing that we have today is that the World Health Organization has upgraded Mexico's classification to phase two of coronavirus, which means that we now have community spread, which means that people here are being infected who have not traveled outside of Mexico at this point. Yeah. According to what we know now, there are 360 known cases of coronavirus here in Mexico think that there are still less than 20 in the Yucatan, but it's been a little difficult to get those numbers in the past couple of days. Uh, and today we had the first death happen in the Yucatan as well. Here's everything we know so far about the coronavirus situation in Mexico. We've been upgraded to phase two, which means that we're now in a community spread situation. Uh, schools are closed until April 19th. Uh, small towns have begun to block access here in the Yucatan, the town of Motul and the town of Tequit closed off. Nobody can get in or out of those towns and the beach communities along the coast have also been blocked off. All of the tourism has been shut down, archaeological sites, cenotes have been closed, bars and nightclubs are closed, and everybody's been asked to stay inside. Okay, so I'm just going to read a quick couple of snippets from this uh, message from the governor of the Yucatan. Uh, but if you want to read the whole article, you can do so in English on theyucatantimes.com and we'll put the link down below. This pandemic is a great challenge from which I am sure we will emerge united. All the great chapters behind the great history of the Yucatan are challenges. It won't be easy, but just because it's difficult doesn't mean it's impossible. There is nothing impossible for the human spirit. That's why there is the union of efforts and that's why there is the union of wills. Everything that is happening reminds me of the meaning of being Yucatan. The pandemic will not come and defeat people like us, people used to moving forward every day. We have been tested and even amid great storms and natural disasters, we have moved forward and we are going to do so again. He goes on to say, in the next few days, I will ask more sacrifices from Yucatan society in terms of coexistence, economic activity and mobility, I know it won't be easy, but it will be worth it. I ask you to support me because I am not going to take any measures lightly, but no necessary measures will be left out. And then he goes on to talk about some economic and fiscal stimulus packages that are supposed to be coming out in the next few days. Uh, we'll wait and see what that's going to look like, but those are supposed to be helping out uh, fishermen, hotels and restaurants, people who don't have permanent jobs and people who work on their own. So. We'll keep an eye on that situation and as it develops. In the next few days, I'll ask for more sacrifices. What do you think that? I don't know what that could mean, and I don't want to speculate on what the sacrifices they'll ask of the Yucatan are. Uh, maybe it has to do with people like staying home from work. More so, I, I feel really good about this message overall. Um, I think that the way that he talked about it and about the Yucatan coming together. Everything that we've experienced here in the Yucatan has shown us that the Yucatan comes together and unites um, and they take care of each other. And so I think that really came across in this message from the governor and I think that that will, I think, help people um, feel like they want to do their part. On a personal note, everything is fine with us here. We're, we're doing perfectly fine here in Merida as if anything changes on, on that front, we'll let you know. Mm -hmm. um, but regarding our families, we did find out today that I have three family members who have confirmed cases of coronavirus. 
um, all three of them living in New York right now. So it's definitely hitting home more. Uh, the more people that we talk to and the more friends that we find out have family members who have it, I just hope that they can fight it. This is just the first, um, first people that we know who have this, but there's going to be a lot more of this over the coming months. And so uh, in addition to the difficulties of the quarantine, like these things are going to become more difficult as well. Yeah. And so. And I think uh, on that note, um, it's harder and harder every day to tell yourself that going home is not necessarily the best choice. Um, for us, like going home to New York right now, even to be with our families. Foolish. Yeah. I think foolish in this moment and just thinking very quickly doing what's best for ourselves and the rest of the world in right. us traveling and moving around so yeah, yeah it's easy to really want to just jump on a plane and go home in a situation like this but when home is the center of everything right now uh, it's definitely not the place we want to be and we understand that these are individual decisions that people yeah. need to make for some people, going home is absolutely the right decision. Mm -hmm. But for us, in this situation, as of right now, it's definitely not. We'll be here in Merida for the foreseeable future. If anything changes with that, you'll be the first to know. Today, we had a chance to talk to our very dear friend, Gavi. Gavi lives in Israel, and she works in hotels and tourism there. We first met Gavi when we were working in Skagway, Alaska, uh, all of us as tour guides. It's really good to catch up with her and see what's going on on that side of the world um, in a very different situation. Um, very enlightening to hear from different people how each country is handling things. Hi. Hey. Is that recording? How's everybody doing? Good. 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 Wait just a second. We have to turn on the camera. Uh, official camera. How are you feeling? Yeah, what's up? How's it going? Doing good, actually. I know everybody's, you know, going crazy and shit's down, but um, we're all good right here. <laughs> good. 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 Spirits are up. What does your situation look like? About a week and a half ago, I was notified that I will be getting a leave uh, without pay basically. So not fully um, fired because most, that's also the case with most people here in the country is that it's not a full a, unemployment, but it's leave without pay. Luckily, I am eligible for unemployment benefits. So I'm, I, I am supposed to get paid. You're working at the hotel still? Yeah. So I'm working in the hotel and um, we kind of saw things slowing down drastically very fast as of late February when they started not accepting uh, tourists from China into the country and then slowly, gradually moving on to more and more countries and more regulations as far as who's coming into the country because that's how it started is with people importing um, the corona in. I'm really lucky that where I work, they didn't let anyone go. We're just on leave uh, with the hopes that, you know, once this all goes back to routine and to normal life, we'll uh, go back to work and they'll have the whole staff. Are you in quarantine? Uh, so there isn't full quarantine here in the country, although every day there's, there's government uh, discussions, like there's a big... Uh, conflict between the health office as opposed to the economic. No, you're going to have to help me with this one. Like the economic yeah. side versus the health uh, side. Exactly, and economics. So there is still not full quarantine in Israel, but uh, basically there are more and more guidelines, uh, more stricting guidelines. They are talking about quarantine in certain cities or neighborhoods where there's like a high percentage. But uh, as of now, you are still able to go out of the house to get food and medicine. Uh, there is full quarantine for people over 65. And other than that, you're like, everything is closed. Everything is shut down. No shopping malls, no restaurants. 
uh, no theaters, um, all gyms are closed. There's no uh, gathering of more than 10 people um, at once, and you have to keep, you know, two meters apart. What um, about religious still, like, uh, buildings and stuff, like synagogues and mosques and stuff? Are those closed as well? Yeah, that's actually a big um, thing here in the country. It, you know, in the secular section, you don't feel it, you know, as much when regarding to, um, to religious life. But every day now in the news, there's like uh, an article about what's going on in the religious neighborhoods, especially in Jerusalem, where there's a big, big, um, there's a big population in a small area. The density is very high. And they go not necessarily by what the government, by the country's uh, decisions, but by their rabbi. They have been like trying to be more and more strict about it with the religious uh, sector. Um, and they have pushed on for rabbis to say, hey, close, you know, we have to fight this. So there has been a certain amount of reduction, we shall say, of people, but there's still so many out there in their streets, in their neighborhoods, um, but there are synagogues that are closed. The official thing is that there's no synagogues. Uh, you can get together. If there's a funeral, you can go to the funeral. If there's a wedding, you can go to a wedding, but you still have to stay apart, you know, the distance and what about at the temple in Jerusalem, like at the Western Wall? Is there like all that congregation still there or is that shut down? So they've actually not mentioned, I haven't seen anything specifically about the, the waiting wall, but um, synagogues are closed. They're like locking down. People are not going in. It's only the ones that are really within the neighborhoods deep inside where it's completely run by the rabbinical. First of all, they did come out saying, like rabbis are coming out saying, you have to be, if you are, if you've been tested and waiting for results for the virus, you have to have uh, availability during Shabbat. If they tell you that you are, and you have to be now evacuated to a hospital and it's Shabbat, you have to do that. So like they're, they're very strict about this. That this is um, what they say in 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 the Bible. It's um, basically it's it's a shomer nefesh mechayesh Shabbat. You're like if it's for yourself, it's your livelihood. Then Shabbat has to wait. And this is one of those cases. So they're putting an they official. They're so, sort of like suspending the Shabbat laws or Shabbat rules for this situation. In normal days. Um, religious people will turn off completely their phones and not even touch them. They don't deal with them. So now they're supposed to have them still on. And if they make a phone call, they're supposed to be able to answer and they will have to drive like all of these things that you are not allowed to do on Shabbat. And a, another big thing, which is very interesting, you know, showing the dilemma of religious people is uh, with dipping in the mikveh. Yeah. is the purification. It's a big thing for religious people, you know, cleansing and being pure. And there are many that go by the rules of the cleansing before, you know, for marital issues and when you are supposed to dip and when not. Rituals that you're supposed to do during the month. It's just a whole ordeal. Not to get like too specific about this, but you keep mentioning like marital rituals and like monthly rituals. Are we talking about like sex and menstruation here? Yes. Okay. Yes and yes. So can you be a little more specific about like how those rituals break down under these circumstances? Like what is supposed to happen? Well, we can get into okay. this. First of all, there is <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> For women, uh, because we have the menstrual cycle, uh, you are supposed to cleanse. 
you're supposed to cleanse a few times uh, during uh, that period. But basically, a woman that is during, is in her period, she's unpure, um, and she's not allowed to do even more things than she's usually not allowed to do. According to Jewish um, law, correct? According to the Jewish law, yes. Very important. Once you're done with your period, you have to become pure again, so you have to clean up. Um, as far as men, a relationship, you know, between a man and a wife, you're also supposed to go and purify before you uh, have uh, sex, basically. The woman is supposed to purify, or the man is supposed to, or both? Both. Oh, every time? Well, you're not supposed to do it for recreational use. <laughs> It's for reproduction. <laughs> it brings to a question on a much greater level of, the, you know, people are talking about, are we going to see a baby boom or right. not? Right. We're going to have to, because, you know, for Israel is definitely, you can say that any time that there was a war or a, like a prolonged war in Israel, there was a baby boom after that. And people from the beginning have been saying, you know, well, either marriages are going to survive and you're going to see lots of kids or they're just going to end and they're going to meet each other at court at the end of this thing. <laughs> okay, so I have a question about a separate topic. What about conflicts in Israel? Have things changed with that? Has it's like kind of on a low fire right now as far as what comes out to the media. There was like issues whether are they going to allow Palestinians come in from the authority that have work permits or are they going to close down? There are places within the Palestinian Authority that they quarantined themselves like Bethlehem which had an out, a small outbreak and they kind of tried to maintain that. You're not really hearing about that whole thing right now. What's going on in the news is mainly the virus and the government's issue. We had elections <laughs> um, in the beginning of the month, <laughs> March 2nd. We still don't have a government. Woohoo! Um, Fun times. So there's a how is this country running these this crisis? Who what's you know who makes regulations? Who can make new rules? Who can make these laws? How you know like government offices can't make discussions about basically anything because you can't gather more than ten people in one room and we don't have a government yet and it's been fifteen months without a government in Israel. So. So yeah. just because it's so. just because it's not in the news doesn't mean that it's not happening, but you're not really hearing about it right now. Correct. I mean, as always, it's always been that there's um, a lot of things that don't go up to the media. It's if you're living there, you're aware of it. Or if you go looking for it in certain news areas that they will bring it up. Um, I mean, there are still explosive balloons that they're sending from the Gaza Strip inside um that's something that basically has not died down it's not going away you know every few days there's something um there's people around the fence it's an ongoing thing it, it it's the fact that they're not talking about it does not mean it doesn't happen how about the healthcare system in israel are they more equipped to handle this than the united states less equipped to handle this how does this stack up against some of the other countries around it so we are hearing two voices um, regarding this. A, we are fairly, very, you know, um, advanced um, health system in comparison to around the world. We have like a, a really good facility. We've got excellent doctors. They have training for all sorts of different disasters. And because of our country, the health system knows how to deal with different crises, and they've been through a lot. The first case in Israel was at the end of February. By the 14th of March, they've declared that all citizens from around the world, anybody that comes into the country has to go into self-quarantine which is fairly fast. We still have less than 2,000 uh, people that have positive check for uh, the corona, and only 
three casualties. Only three have died. Um, and that's also from the last few days. Again, elderly with background symptoms. So on the one hand, people are saying that Israel moved fairly fast, um, pretty extreme. There's a lot of complaints about the amount of testing that they're doing in the country and how they're doing the epidemiology epidemiological um, research. They've actually allowed the Secret Service to trace phone IPs of people in the country. And you can get a message saying, hey, on this day, uh, you've been around a person that was found to be positive. You need to go into self-quarantine. Wow. Uh, yes. Big, big thing in the country because people are saying, you know, well, this is going into private life and you're using this for the wrong uh, reasons. Um, and the reasoning that they gave that why we are doing this is to try and catch this as fast as we can. But people are saying that that's not enough and that the amount of testing that they're doing is not enough. Uh, some high people in, um, in the health ministry are saying that uh, we are looking at numbers that can bring us to situations like Italy and Spain. And there are some people are saying, guys, you're like way, way off. Yes, it's going to go get even worse than we are right now, but it's not going to be as bad and we do have the ability like all countries, they're really trying to um, find sources for getting more supplies because we can hear from people out there in the field in the hospitals saying that they've been given instructions to use the same masks, that they don't have enough, so you can't use the same you can't replace masks. So they're going checking patients and moving into a different room with the same mask all day long. So there's like these two voices going on all the time. People are saying, we don't have enough supply. And then people are saying, no, there is, everything's okay. We're not in an emergency state yet. And, and these two voices are being broadcasted during the news. So it's not like, this is just opinions. They're bringing both of them on the news. So it's really hard to say what exactly is going on. And Yes, time will tell. Yeah, that's what we keep saying is it's just impossible. It seems like nobody really has, even the experts who, who are saying things, it seems like even they are being contradicted by other experts. So it's, it's really hard. It's really hard to know what's real and what's not in all of this. So that's what we're yeah. doing is just trying to sift through and get as much information as we can. And I heard a similar report yesterday from uh, my friend's wife who uh, works in hospitals and sh he said that like at the end of the day they've been instructed to like bleach their mask basically and then reuse it the next day because they just don't have enough supply. Was there anything else you wanted to ask Kathy about? Oh I just wanted to ask her like what you're doing in your quarantine yeah, how are you to quarantined? keep busy. I'm loving my time. <laughs> don't go out unless it's for food and stuff like that. I'm actually basically really enjoying my time you know at home doing dance parties, putting some music, Nice. Dancing in my PJs. Um, Speaking supposed to do paperwork, work, but yes. Well, thank you so much for talking to us. This was really fun to catch up with you. Yeah. Uh, we'll check in with you for updates in a, in a couple of weeks and see how things are progressing there. And uh, Let you know. Yeah, stay yeah. safe, stay healthy, wash your hands. We love you. Yeah, we love you. Love you guys. I want to talk about the make and stuff and, and the sexual stuff. Wow, so that was really interesting to hear how things are shaking down in Israel. Mm -hmm. um, specifically this whole situation with the mikvahs and the ritual baths that they're supposed to be taking in camp right now. Uh, a tough choice to make. Yeah. In a, in a very strange position to be put in, no pun intended. <laughs> I also thought it was interesting uh, because everyone has been talking about the baby boom online and that we're going to be expecting some quarantine teenagers coming yeah. in like uh, 13, couple, years. Yeah, 13 years because everyone's home in quarantine and having sex and have babies in nine months but not in israel so potentially. potentially i don't know i don't think that's going to be the case i think it's going to go the other way 
just like Gavi said, in other times in Israel's history when they've had hard times, mm -hmm. it's been followed up by an increase in, in babies. I think it's going to be the same thing in this. I think when it really comes down to it, in this situation, people are going to say, I can't, and therefore, I can't. And so mm -hmm. I'm going to. Listen, I'm not Jewish, but I have studied Judaism. From what I understand in Judaism is that for every Jewish law, there's also some sort of a, an exception to the rule or clause cases of, you know, inability or if you can't, you know, you're supposed to go to the temple on such and such day, but if you're, if you can't, then there's, you know, you go the next day. Okay. Um, so I think that everything's going to be okay, but I do find it an interesting topic. It is. It was something that came out of this call that I was not expecting. Yeah. So if you're in an interesting situation where uh, coronavirus is affecting the way that you live your daily life because of your culture or your religious background, we'd love to hear more about that. It was very interesting for us to hear about how people in Israel are having to make these hard decisions. Mm -hmm. So now we can move into the fun part of the show. The quarantine party! All right. In this part of the show, we talk about fun things that are happening on the internet, things that we can do to keep each other sane and mentally healthy during all of this quarantine and coronavirus tragedy. We need your help with this research. If you're finding fun, cool things that are happening online, please send them to us. We're, we're on Facebook, Instagram. Twitter. Twitter, yeah. Just find our inbox and fill it up with cool shit. This YouTube video. Yeah, comments under this video, wherever. So here's what some of the awesome things that are coming out of coronavirus onto the internet. Yeah. Do you want to start with the poop calculator? Yeah. If you are facing the imminent situation where your toilet paper supply is dwindling and you're not sure how many days you have left, fear not. How long will it last? The internet now has a poop calculator brought to you by Vice. You just punch in how many rolls of toilet paper that you have in your current supply mm -hmm. by, and then you adjust for the number of people in your household. And the amount that you take a shit. No, 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 that's not what no. it is. No. <laughs> what are you supposed to measure it? I don't know. So it does have its limitations, but it's fun, it's fun. <laughs> Links, of course, you can find underneath. New Childish Gambino album came out this week. Cool. It is awesome. Is it? Awesome. I have to give it a couple more listens too. I haven't like specifically listened to it, but what do you think? It's called 315 2020. From the rumors that I've heard online, it is the end of Childish Gambino. This is like the last album that he's producing and he's moving on to more Donald Glovery thing. I'm not convinced that any that there's any validity to these rumors. Maybe I'm just in denial because I love Childish Gambino. <laughs> Nighttime quarantine parties are becoming a thing on Instagram Live. Daily quarantine parties yeah. as well. Um, besides the other DJs that we've mentioned before uh, that are doing live shows, we've got new people all the time po popping up with Netflix parties and DJ parties and just like live sets happening all the time. Where can people find out about that stuff? Hashtag quarantine party on Instagram is a good place to find these things. Club quarantine is one of the hashtags that yes. we found that posts like live DJ set. Very cool stuff that's going on right now. Yeah. I love all this amazing free content that's just like blasting onto the internet right now. I hope the internet can handle it. Uh, on Wednesday, the 25th of March at 6.30 Eastern Daylight Time, uh, DJ D Nice is having a voter registration live set on Instagram, hashtag couch party. With Michelle Obama. Oh, Michelle Obama's gonna be there? I think so. That's tonight. Lastly, our top Netflix picks for your COVID-19 quarantine. Three series, three movies. This is probably going to become a recurring segment. Also known as what we're watching right now. Yeah. <laughs> Atlanta. We just finished. We talked about how much we love Childish Gambino. Donald Glover is there directing, producing the show. It's it's like Twin Peaks in the hood. Yeah, it's weird and awesome yeah. and just fucking great. Yeah. Another one, The Circle, if you want to feel like you're in the show. Watch this social media based game show. Kind of like Big Brother, but everybody's in separate apartments and they can only communicate through social media. It's literally A the quarantine. quarantine party. It's literally a quarantine party. <laughs> uh, and, then, and then Maniac with Jonah Hill and Emma Stone. Emma Stone. On the movie side of things, we have I Am Legend. 
to get your zombie senses tingling. Yeah, I don't know if anybody else is expecting the zombie apocalypse to happen out of this, but I'm not ruling it out. Uh, another one, The Big Short, perfect movie to watch in times of, uh, you know, stop. Economic decline. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, if you're looking for who to blame. Uh, <laughs> and lastly, Inside Out. Uh, these are tough emotional times, and I think Inside Out is the perfect movie to... Get us back in touch with our emotions. So, I think that's all we have for today. Do you have any personal messages of hope or... Hang the fuck in there. <laughs> yeah. We're here for you. Uh, come chat with us on social media. Uh, we'll do our best. We we want to hear from you. So, if, if we're friends and we haven't talked in a while, please reach out to us. We really want to hear from you. We've been calling people up every single day. So likely your number is going to come up, but please don't wait for us to call you. Just give us a call. And for the rest of you, leave comments in the in the box below because we'll, we'll respond to those too. We're all in this together. We sure. Anything else?